That's an abrupt ending. <laughs> Welcome to Paladins of Voltron, an unofficial podcast about the Netflix original series Voltron Legendary Defender. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at POV underscore podcast or on Facebook at POV podcast, or you can email us at feedback at POV podcast.com. I'm Jeremy, and with me, as always, is Jason. How are you doing, Jason? Always is in three episodes before this. Yes. Six episodes, seven episodes after the eight episodes after this. Always, yeah, always works. I can't do math. Why am I trying to do math? <sighs> Silly math me. Math is hard. It is. Let's watch cartoons. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, today we are going to be looking at the fourth episode called Greening the Cube, written by Lars Kenseth. And directed by Eugene Lee. Uh, the, the episode begins with the Paladins outside the ship making some repairs. Hunk is being directed by Princess Alora as to what to do, but he can't read Altaian. Pidge works it out after Lance tries to do it and almost blows everyone up. The castle then heads into an area that looks like snowballs while the, the Paladins are still outside. And they start to have a, a snowball fight with it, but Pidge realizes that they're actually spores, and she takes one in to examine it. She discovers that there is a hidden message in the spore, and um, when they plot the, the course to where the message came from, uh, Cran reveals that it's the planet um, that was home to the Alkari, and they are the universe the universe's best engineers and had the ability to shape metal. And um, then Koran showed the team a cube that the Okari, the Okari gave them that, uh, that could repeat sounds. And as Koran is talking about this in the cube, Pidge is just going absolutely nuts. Just like looking at it from all angles and, you know, very anime expressions and just, she's in love with the technology. So she's excited about going to this planet and then gets upset when they discover that the the um, coordinates are actually going to the forest and not the city. But they soon encounter the people that sent the signal and um, they they are the Okari and they've evolved to use nature much like they've used machinery in the past. Uh, their king had been captured by the Galra and has forced the population of the city to work as slaves to build a super weapon. The leader of the rebels shows the team how they um, how they cre create their equipment from nature, and uh, when she tries to show them how they can do it, Pidge is the only one that's able to actually interface, thanks to her knowledge of science and probably an apparent connection with nature, uh, likely through the Green Lion. They devise a plan to rescue the king. However, when they infiltrate the Galra fortress, they discover that he's not exactly being held prisoner. He sold his people out, and he calls security to help capture the, the paladins. As they're trying to make their escape, Pidge makes a save in the Green Lion and rescues the paladins and the king. The Galra weapon is has been finished, though, and the paladins, uh, they form Voltron to fight it, and the, the weapon is a giant cube. Uh, it acts much like Koran's, except in, instead of repeating sounds, it re reflects back whatever blasts that Voltron had fired at it. Voltron tries the um, blazing sword, and suddenly one giant cube is now four smaller ones. So Voltron separates back into the lions, and they try to find a, a, another way to defeat the cube. Pidge and Green Lion through this have for, formed a greater bond and a newer a new ability is unlocked. Green Lion shoots a blast at each cube and a giant plant grows out of it. The cube is defeated, but the Gower have also escaped. The Paladins leave after freeing the Okari people and they got a promise from the Okari to help when it's time to, to push back against Archon. However, once they're back in the castle and have a laugh, Suddenly, the Gower fleet comes out of hyperspace, and the episode ends. So I thought this was another good episode. I was initially thinking that I wasn't going to enjoy this episode as much, and it turns out I really did like it. Um, it's a, a pitch-focused episode, which I, I do like to see, 
but sometimes you're afraid that it's just going to be overexposure to one particular character. And yeah. it's, I thought they did a very well. This, I mean, Pidge was the focus, but everyone else got a chance to, you know, to shine a little bit. Yeah. If you remember <clears throat> last episode, I spoke about how Pidge has had her, uh, anime moments. Obviously yeah. Much more this, this episode <laughs> and they're great. Um, Pidge is probably my spirit animal in that she says she hates the outdoor because of <laughs> poison oak and sun and, and her then, complexion. Uh, yeah. And then at one point <laughs> says, uh, with the Okari says, you must have a connection with nature. And she goes, not really. My allergies won't let me, <laughs> <laughs> which as someone who refuses to eat outside at work on a, mm. on this during the summer because of my allergies, I can understand completely. Yeah. As someone who's suffered through many a summer at Boy Scout camp with allergies. Yeah, really? Yeah, it, it's some of us are not really made to spend a lot of time outside. Nope. I, I'm looking at two, two people right now, some yeah. pretty pale skin. So I think <laughs> I think I can agree with that. Um, yeah, this episode had definitely had the potential to not be great. And it's, it's, it's hey, guess what? <laughs> it's really good. Um, the, the idea of them using, you know, uh, wood or, you know, the forest to, as building mm-hmm. materials, but they're still mechanical. You know, they, at one point they're in a section of the woods and I think she was like, where are we? <laughs> they're like, oh, the armory. And they just pull like these seeds off a of plant and start shooting the guns. And I'm like, that's yeah. great. Um, the moment. And they had these wooden mecha yep. things that basically just came from the trees. Yeah, and Pidge is able to activate one. <laughs> and Lance has his hand on the tree, and he's trying, and nothing happens. He's like, I goes, think mine's just a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The comedy on these episodes yeah. are just great. And this is an episode where the green line is down. The other four lines are getting the crap kicked out of them. And you can... You can juxtapose this with, um, you know, the comedy. And this is an episode where Voltron doesn't get the job done. Voltron is separated, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, Voltron fails. Yeah. Voltron tends to fail a lot, which is, an, a, you know. But that's thing. more the paladins probably than anything else. Oh, absolutely. No, if more trained paladins and Voltron. I'm sure Voltron could have used the Green Lion's power if they knew about it. Right. Um Exactly. So, and he, the twist of the king uh, basically selling out his people, which mm-hmm. is a tropey thing to do, but that's the thing with the show. They do tropey things, and they do it in a good way. And boy, Shiro, you see the bad side of Shiro. Shiro's having none of it. He yeah. throws that guy down. He's like, this this guy has sold you out. He's basically well, turned you into and slaves. Y- and you see at the beginning of the episode where the leader of this resistance group says the King's name and they're all like, you know, praising the King's name. And then after Shiro reveals all of this, it just immediately changes. Yeah. That was their God King. And uh, yeah. that ended poorly for them. Um, the beginning of this episode is really fun where they're trying. <laughs> Alora and Koran are both telling them what they should be doing. And they're using a They're using words that they don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Lance is just like, oh no, you just do this, and he basically sets the castle on fire almost. Um, I, I want to know how the writers come up with these words. Probably, probably the same way they name characters in Star Wars. <laughs> There's a book somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and they have that fun little fight at the beginning, and you know, you see, yeah, it, it's you see the the lighter side of the paladins, where you know. Their task is done. They can have a little bit of fun. But then at the end, when they find out what that king did, it's like, oh, nope. Mm-hmm. We are not happy campers right now. Yeah. So. um, I think it was neat seeing that uh, there's another environment where a particular lion shines. Like you saw uh, the blue lion in the water is really more powerful in the water. And then the green lion obviously has this connection with nature. So on a green planet, I'm sure the green lion is a little more powerful than normal. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, the only thing, the only line we haven't really seen that yet with, I guess at this point is because the the black lines is kind of all throughout the series and little bits and yeah. pieces. Um, kind of yellow line, but the yellow lines thing is it's big and bulky. Or no, I guess we get the episode. There's an episode we, we, where we yeah we get an episode with with yellow lion. Yeah. So yeah, so, they, they actually do fill all the requirements and stuff. But um, the the particular blue and green lion does play into the original series, you know, where the lions were housed underwater or in the forest. Yep. Uh, the red line and nice. lava. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, they, they allude to that kind of in the credits. Eventually, if the series ever gets to earth, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they end up doing, but it'd be interesting now, at this rate, they never have to get to earth and it'll still be fine. It's not like it would be, <clears throat> you know, a travesty if the if they never end up on Earth or anything mm-hmm. like that. Although I'm pretty sure at some point they'll end up. Uh, I, I would like to see them end up on Earth because oh, yeah. there's unfinished business with the Galaxy Garrison and the Cadets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a big part of season one where it just hits them all. Like, wow, as long as we're doing this, we can't go home. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Lance is very beat up, Hunk is beat up, and you know, they have this. There's this great thing. They are these paladins of this powerful force for good in the universe they basically can't live their lives anymore what i would like to see is because the people on earth did see the lion yeah i would like to see that like the when they get back to earth they see the galaxy years and has kind of reverse engineered what they've seen and you get vehicle voltron dang boy you just called out Mm -hmm. You just got caught up vehicle Voltron. Voyager, the vehicle vehicle Voltron's coming. Dang, they can totally uh, do just, that. In my head, Canon, that's what happens. I, I don't think you're wrong. I could see them totally <laughs> doing that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, they can make vehicle Voltron cool. I will admit, I've never seen anything of vehicle Voltron. Um, I have. Have you seen the um, Robot Chicken? Probably, but that was years ago. I think. So look that up. I will. I remember the breakdancing Voltron robot chicken. That was a classic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just trying to th- like, oh, yeah, in the end of the episode where they're, you know, they're having fun. There's all the cubes. They're all copying everything they says they say. And then Zarkon's ship appears and Koran goes, oh, no. And then all the cubes go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like, that was and funny. This is, the but only, then- this is the only show I know that could take that moment of, oh, crap. And make it funny. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I can't believe they did that. They pulled it off. Oh, my God. I think. Well, and then you're off. just left with this is an entire fleet in credits. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> Which in, in a weekly episodic show that would be like, oh, crap. I cannot wait until the next week. But Netflix, you're like 20 seconds countdown. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is. I'd love to see the numbers from Netflix because I guarantee you maybe less than 0.01% of people didn't go right to episode five after episode four. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming mm-hmm. the number's pretty low. So yeah, great way to end it. Good. Cl- that's not even a cliffhanger. That's dropping the mic. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah that, that is a mic drop. <laughs> a mic drop to end Voltron. Yeah. Uh, and then I think finally the last point I have here is just it's nice to see that the team gained some allies. Yes. Uh, the Okari did promise that they will help, you know, with whatever the whatever the Voltron team needs when it comes time to mount that last fight against Sarkon. Yes, yeah, so we have the, the the Blade of Marmora. We've got the, the Okari. Um, the, um, oh shoot, season one, the uh, Alort. Illusion or mm. illusion, yeah. The people in Eris, right? They they aren't a big help though because they're tiny, right? But they are a member of the Voltron Alliance, yeah. Per uh, uh, Alora's decree, so that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, it's nice to see them built because obviously Voltron by itself isn't going to get it done, um, especially since Zarkon demonstrated some control over the Black Lion in their meeting at the end of first uh, the first season. So they're going to need some help. And they're getting that help. It's starting. You can see the threads of where they're going to end, mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. They're, they're just gently seeding it, but they're still seeding it, which is really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm with you. I thought, eh, this might not be the best episode. 
Yeah, it's a pretty good episode. So yeah, I think uh, I think we can give this one a thumbs up, just like the last three. <laughs> yep. Show is batting a thousand right now. Mm-hmm. Spoilers that kind of continues. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have anything else you wanted to bring up on the show? No, I think I covered pretty much everything. It's nice that we're seeing all the the lines get their powers and the the paladins growing with the lines and what that's doing and. You know, it's just, <clears throat> this is stuff that easily could have been, like, thrown into the first couple of episodes of season one, and they'd have nothing to build on, but they've spaced it out fine. So, good on them. They're doing great. So, yeah, that's that's my last my last point. They're doing the the story arc and the writing and everything. It's, it's pitch perfect, I think. Another well-paced episode. Yep. All right. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at POV underscore podcast, Facebook at POV podcast, or you can email us at feedback at POV podcast.com. And you can subscribe uh, wherever you, you find podcasts. Um, we'll be there. iTunes, Google play. Um, you can see this on, on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe there. Give us a uh, five star, um, reviews and, and ratings and you know Voltron's five lions we only like five stars there it is there <laughs> it is you just that that's 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 it that's where we're going from now on yeah <laughs> don't forget you can comment on the post for each episode too yeah yeah and uh we assuming that you guys like it, it like us and give us feedback the next episode is probably going to be a feedback episode very possible. You might also see us in different shirts then. Or yeah. maybe we'll just wear the same clothes each time we record and you'll have no idea when we stopped. We won't remember. No, not that. Well, although chances of me wearing a Transformer shirt is probably pretty good. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks a lot for, for watching or listening, and we will talk to you guys later. Yeah.